Have you ever wondered where museums keep their fossils? Yes, of course, at any given time, a museum will have a certain number of its fossils out on display. But museums change their exhibits from time to time. They pull their fossils from the floor and replace them with others. Where do they keep the fossils that aren't on display? People are often surprised to learn just how many fossils, rocks, minerals, and other samples museums keep in their collections. It's not uncommon for museums to store thousands, tens of thousands, even millions of fossils in their storage facilities. These warehouses are just packed with drawers full of fossils. Each of the fossil specimens in these facilities are stored with important information on their origins. This information is usually kept on a specimen card. This specimen card usually tells you what the fossil is, who collected it, and where. It may also tell you about the absolute or relative age of the fossil. Now imagine this. What if you knew where every fossil in the world came from? What if you could trace every fossil back to the rocks where it came from? What would that look like? This isn't possible quite yet. After all, the world is huge. That's a lot of fossils to think about. But there is hope. For some time, paleontologists around the world have been busy developing a global database of fossils. A database is an organized collection of data and information. It is usually stored and managed using computers. Paleontologists have pooled their knowledge and experience in order to create a large digital repository for data on fossils. The name of this repository is the Paleobiology Database, or PBDB. The PBDB is an open access data resource that is freely available at their website, paleobiodb.org. One way to think about the PBDB is like a card catalog in which entries like books or contacts are arranged systematically. However, rather than books or contacts, the PBDB is an index of fossil collections. A fossil collection is a set of one or more fossils like these collected from a specific location. We can produce a map of these fossil collections. This map here illustrates the sites and localities where fossils have been collected all around the world. Although this map includes points for over 100,000 fossil collections, it is far from complete. The paleobiology database is a work in progress. It is constantly growing. So how exactly does it work? It's simple, really. When a paleontologist finds a fossil, they study it and then publish their findings in a journal or book so that other scientists can read about their discovery. Then the scientist or someone else who reads the article or book chapter gets on their computer and visits the web page for the paleobiology database. From there, they simply enter the information that they have on the fossil, what it is, where it comes from, how old it is, and how it is preserved. And anything else that a paleontologist might want to know about it. Once a fossil collection has been entered into the PBDB, 
The information can be found by searching the database with its built-in search engine. Let's say we wanted to use the PBDB to search for fossils of a certain species, like Paradoxites gracilis, a trilobite that lived during the Cambrian period. All we need to do is type its name into the search box and click it from the drop-down menu. This will bring up data on Paradoxites gracilis. This data includes data on its classification. As you can see, it's a trilobite. It also provides data on the morphology of Paradoxites gracilis, its ecology and taphonomy, how it lived and how it was preserved as a fossil, as well as its age range and its collections. Where can you actually find it? In this case, Paradoxites gracilis only occurs in the Middle Cambrian of the Czech Republic. The PBDB website includes a variety of tools for accessing, downloading, and exploring its data. Many of these tools are meant for scientists conducting detailed research projects and require training to use properly. But one of the tools, the Navigator, provides fast, immediate access to the database and provides a variety of options for visualizing the data. Let's open the Navigator by clicking the blue button in the middle of the screen. As you can see, the navigator opens a map of the world. We can zoom in and out of this map using the scroll wheels on our mice, as well as the plus and minus buttons located on the left side of the screen. Let's zoom in on North America. The circles that you are seeing indicate the locations of fossil collections. The colors correspond to time periods in the geologic time scale, illustrated at the bottom of your screen. As we zoom in further, we will see changes in the map. The resolution will improve and we will have a better idea of where our fossil collections are located. Let's click on one of the circles. As you can see, this circle shows us the information on one fossil collection. There's the collection number, which tells us its designation in the database, the occurrences, the number of fossil species reported from the collection, the interval or age of the collection, in this case, early Mississippian, the lithology of the rock that produced the fossils, its environment, in this case, the fossils are marine, and the reference, the publication produced describing the fossils. Let's now click on the Occurrences tab. The Occurrences tab tells you what sort of fossils occur in the collection. In this case, the fossils belong to the phylum chordata, vertebrate animals, and to the class chondrichthys. Chondrichthys are sharks. So this fossil collection is a fossil collection of sharks. Let's click on a different circle. This time, let's click on one of the larger circles. As you can see, the larger circles correspond to multiple fossil collections. In this case, 
The circle corresponds to a number of fossil collections located near Crawfordsville in Indiana. If we click on any of the fossil collections, we can access the data on them and find out which fossils occur in each one. Let's now zoom out and look at some of the other features of the navigator. There are multiple ways of filtering the data and reducing the amount of information that is being visualized. The geologic time scale is interactive. If we click on a time period, we will filter the data so we only see that time period represented. Let's click on the Jurassic. By doing so, we filtered the data and we are now only seeing fossil collections of Jurassic age. We can clear this filter by scrolling to the left side of the screen and clicking the X next to Jurassic. Another way that we can filter the data is by searching for specific groups of fossils. We can do so using the search box in the upper right hand corner of the screen. For example, let's say we wanted to find all fossil occurrences of dinosaurs. We simply type in dinosauria, the proper scientific term for dinosaurs. It will show up in a pop-up box and we can click on it. The map changes and now we are only seeing fossil collections that consist of dinosaurs. In combination, this means we can filter our data two ways together. We can search for dinosaurs in the search box and we can click on the Jurassic. Now we are only seeing fossil collections that contain dinosaur fossils and are Jurassic in age. It's important to note that we can also apply multiple filters to the data. Here I've included, in addition to the Jurassic and dinosaur filters, filters for bivalves, clams, and gastropods or snails. The map is now showing you all fossil collections that contain dinosaurs, clams, or snails, and are Jurassic in age. There are two helpful options for visualizing data in the PBDB. Let's say you wanted to see the world as it was during the Jurassic period. You want to see where the continents, the land masses of the planet, were located. On the left hand side of your screen, you will see a little icon that says Paleogeography. The Paleogeography icon will reposition the continents to their locations during a specific time interval. So if we select the Jurassic and click on the toggle Paleogeography icon, it will show us the world as it was roughly 150 to 180 million years ago. We can also use the navigator to produce diversity curves by clicking on the toggle stats button located on the left side of the screen. This is a diversity curve. The Y or vertical axis shows you the diversity of life either the number of species, genera, families, or orders of life. The X or horizontal axis corresponds to geologic time, the age. I have not filtered the data here. You are seeing the diversity of life at different points in Earth history. As you can see, the diversity of life has increased over time toward the present. Life is more diverse now than it has almost ever been.
you now know enough to use the PBDB for yourself. You are bound to find that the PBDB puts a wealth of data right at your fingertips. All you need to do is explore.